Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show, brought to you by Miller Lite. Let's join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Servi, along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. And good evening, everybody. Welcome to Andy Max for the John Riston Show here on Fox Sports Pueblo. Joe Servi joining yours truly, Jim Brooks. John Riston, the head coach, he'll be along shortly. They've got a little extra work to get in tonight. He warned us that it was going to be a little bit later tonight, so Joe and I will carry forth here. Tundra's in the house. We like it when Tundra's here. Pretty good crowd on hand. we got a $5 buffet here if anybody wants to come view the show. I'm not sure what it is tonight. And, uh, yeah. of course, Joe and I have in front of us our usual fare. Plus, they've uh, kicked it up a notch. Looks like they've got a little quesadilla in front of us here with it's some salsa, sour cream. Some uh, boneless buffalo wings oh. uh, with oh. dipping sauces and our favorite, the meatballs, the meatballs and the garlic bread. So that's what Joe and I Joe and I have about 3,000 calories in front of us. Well, John's not here yet. So, yeah, so well, we yeah, can we'll, have whatever we want. Exactly. We'll hold off. But uh, come on down here and join us here at Andy Max. And uh, if you got, uh, if you're here in the house, we got a hot mic tonight. You can give us questions. Already getting uh, text messages in. Already got about eight of them lined up. Everybody wants to know what's going on this week, Joe. And I haven't even previewed them yet, but well, uh, there's you, a lots of things to be answered. If you put your head outside the window right now here at Andy Max, you could probably hear the coaches. Exactly. I, I left practice at, at about 5:30 today, and it was a very spirited practice. It was very verbal. It was much one-sided conversation today. Yeah. I don't know that it was actually conversation. I think it was more direction. Or as we like to say, it was one direction. Exactly. It was, no. a, it was a little... Uh, the coaches were in full throat. Yeah, no music probably yet. Oh, no, still... Yeah, still haven't heard the music. Got to get a win. And, and it's, it's, it's strange because, you know, Darren Wilkinson, when he came from Colorado State University in Fort Collins, he came and... He, they, they, they initiated that back when he was here, and that's three offensive coordinators ago yeah. and a national championship ago, so it's weird to go out to practice and not hear the different playlists. When Wardo's playlist, it's country and oldies, right. and when John, he's got Lil Wayne and some, and then when it's the players, it's Pandora rap. <laughs> and if you don't get the uncensored, it's lots of colorful language. Well, this is right now uncharted waters for the last seven years or so because or six years because if you go back to last year Joe lost the last game first two this year that's a three game losing streak the Thunderwolves on the last three game losing streak was back in the seven and four season I think it had been 2010, 2010 yeah. when they dropped three in a row in the middle of the year when they went through that that was the, the gauntlet tough, yeah. yeah but then they end up winning the last four of the year that year so since then they've never had more than a two game losing streak and here we are working on a three gamer and two games this so far this year. I thought the game Saturday, Joe, was marked improvement, though, compared to the Mines game. Even though they dropped the game, the home opener and all that, I thought they played with a lot more intensity in the game. They just made some mistakes here and there. And you go back to it, though, there are a couple little plays here and there as well that could have changed the tide in that ball game. And, and there are plays that they've made through the years where you got to make your own breaks. But they have a scoop and a score, and he stumbles. You have a receiver breaking free, and he steps out of bounds, just maybe not field awareness. I mean, yeah. those are normally touchdowns. Yeah. Uh, you miss three field goals, we, and, but the wind was howling. Mm-hmm. It was howling both directions all game long, and we we couldn't, even where we were sitting, gauge which way it was blowing. And those are things that they have been able to just push through or have gone their way in, in games. And I talked to Zach Tinker. He's the head coach at uh, – South Dakota Mines, and I talked to him, and I said, "You got them right where you want them. They're 0 and 2." Yeah. And he said, "Well, if I was a Division One coach, and he said, you played Notre Dame and Florida State your first two games of the year, and you're 0 and 2, you'd be, oh well, yeah, we're 0 and 2 against Florida." He goes, "He thinks that the, the Mines team we saw is a very special team. He thinks it's probably the best unit he's seen in the RMAC in a while. Not." The CSU Pueblo Championship team, notwithstanding, right. but this Mines team, and you and I both said yeah. it, they're pretty good. Yeah, and he said the athletes at West Texas A&M had, he goes, I wish we had their athletes. He goes, there, there were probably more athletes on the field between those two teams last week, CSU Pueblo and West Texas, than they'll see all year. And somebody had to lose that game. But John Riston, when he gets here, he, the first thing he said when I talked to him this week was, we played better. And with a young team, you're going to have to play better. Yeah. Not good enough, but better. And so it, rather than digress and take a step back, they actually took a step forward. And now they got to take that next step 
and they need to take it out on somebody. That's what exactly. They need. And I, I think that's probably what uh, the hard rockers are yeah. worried about getting hard rocked well, this week. They My went goodness. to uh, they went to Dixie State last <laughs> week, and I asked him, I go, how long a bus ride's that? He goes, sixteen hours. Oh my! He goes, going to Pueblo is going to feel like walking across the street to my <laughs> exactly. guys. Exactly. Nice little jaunt to Pueblo for the hard hours. rockers. Well, let's go back and look at the ball game. And if the, the offensively, every time they had the ball, Joe. I don't think there was ever a three and out in the game. Man, they had the pick six there early on in the second half. But in the first half, every time they drove it to the 30-yard line, and that's where they stalled each time. They just couldn't make any more plays after that. One time they had a false start or something, which hurt a drive. Uh, you mentioned the uh, the tight end Morgan Smith. He just, right? he just stepped just out of bounds. Lost his field yeah, he was kind of he got by the guy and he kind of angled yeah. out too far, and his left foot just grazed the sideline. Otherwise, he's going to score. Or he's going to score, and and that's a play that they've made. In but it's a young kid, yeah. new offense, and all of a sudden it's <laughs> that's yeah. and those are the plays you have to make. Yeah, and so. Between the 30s, they were as good as West yeah. Texas A&M, but the game's not played between the 30s. Yeah, he did the old drift there. Then I go back to another play in the game, uh, Michi, when he got in the ball. You remember that run he had up the middle? And he was, he was just breaking into the clear, and I think, you know, we've Turf seen monster. it before. He got so excited that his feet got going a little too fast. Turf monster. And uh, he just kind of stumbled and fell there. Otherwise, he was going to take that inside the 10, undoubtedly. He might have scored. I think he would have scored oh. when I was looking at the field the way he was going to cut into the clear. So that's a play there. They end up getting three on that drive. But uh, you talk about the missed field goals, uh, the interception hurt on the first drive. I mean, kind of an ill advised throw into the wind. Uh, you had the other pick. But there was just breakdowns on each drive after looked like promising drives that ended up going for not. Well, that's the mark of a young team, and not maybe young in terms of grades. A lot of these guys are seeing their first action last week and this week, you know, two weeks of, of live bullets on the field, and they they played behind some really good players. Yeah. So the bar was set so high with those really good players that everybody expected them just to step in and make those same plays that a, a Kieran Duncan would make or a Cam McDonald would make or uh, uh, you know just pick a, a linebacker Rosenbrock yeah. would make or a or Morgan Fox. I mean, the guys in the NFL, you don't lose a defensive right. end like that and go, okay, well we just replace him. It just doesn't work that way. So these guys are working their way toward getting to be at that level and you know if they start with if they start the season with South Dakota Mines and New Mexico Islands or Fort Lewis you can kind of build on that but when you start with your two best teams the two toughest teams on your schedule yeah are games one and two with the young team we, we, yeah, we thought that this could happen they're reaping what they're sowing right now exactly and uh, the other parts of the ball game I thought the the defense for the most part, played pretty well. When you keep putting them out there in bad situations, if occasionally you're going to give up a big play. And uh, when you look back on it, I guess that uh, the one play we saw, I remember I was listening to the replay yesterday, and the one play that was kind of disturbing was the, I think it was a third down play when he said they're going up the middle. I mean, they had to have got caught in out of position there because the we saw the quarterback just kind of go up and whisper to the the center one little tap. and we're gonna we're gonna go right up the middle and they did they went for about 15 yards down to the five then they scored on the next play but other than that i thought they were pretty sound they did hit the little 33 yarder down the sideline i still think the guy was out of bounds i haven't heard definitively from anybody well, whether he touchdown? was yeah yeah I, we'll I have never... to ask john what the film showed on that one if whether he was in or not and uh so that was kind of a, a play that got to him and then you, you look at west texas they went for it on that fourth down and about four from midfield. I mean, that was kind of that was a big time gamble by them. And they got it easy though. That's the yeah. thing. It's, it's so you know there were some plays that they made. You got to just tip your cap to them. I think sometimes a good team will make good plays on you, and I think they did that as well. And, and I love the crowd. There's seven thousand people there. It was yeah. an exciting night. Good atmosphere. Heck, C.J. Anderson of the Denver Broncos. You know you're a Division Two powerhouse. When the Denver Broncos are standing on your sideline, tweeting about who they want to get the ball in the game. Yeah, you know, and it's no surprise that C.J. Anderson wants to see number three get the ball in the game. That's his little brother, Kalen Anderson. Right. But uh, it, it's kind of nice to have that 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 aura down there. It almost looked like I told you on the air. It looked like Southern Cal. There were so many people on the sidelines. It looked like the mini Coliseum. Exactly. Uh, I, I you know I think people are the bar was set so high that zero oh, and two. We don't know how to talk about. It. We just. Yeah. It's got to kind of fight through it ourselves, and, and we, you know, you get hit up all week, and I get hit up all week. You go to the gym, you, you go to the grocery store, you go to the bank, and people want to talk what's wrong with the Thunderwolves, and I think we've, we've pretty much said what's wrong with them. Now it's just a matter of fixing it. Yeah, now we're going to find out over the next few weeks 
are they going to get it right? Now, I think the next two weeks are games that, you know, really they should win. John's not going to want to hear this. No, they on talent win. alone, sure. Yeah, they should win these games by two or three touchdowns, you think, at least. But on paper and between you and me. Right. But he's not going to say that. You no, know we that. can talk about it while he's but, not here. Exactly. <laughs> but he's probably listening on the way in. But these are games, get well games, I guess you could say, or get established games before their next really hard, hard test will be that road game at Mesa. But to make that game worthwhile again they got to take care of business these two weeks if they stumble one of these two games joe it's just kind of like hey let's well, try to build for the future and and then the, in the same breath the saving grace is this week mesa plays mines right okay if you're a csu pueblo fan who do you want to win do you want mines to run the table and that be your only loss to mines or do you want mesa to beat mines and then beat mesa and then there could be that three-way tie for the yeah, yeah put you back the in RMAC the championship right. because you'd be an RMAC thing. I I don't like co-champions, but when there's a three-way, yeah, try you can have yeah, co-champions. Exactly. When there's when there's two teams that went head to head and they tie for a championship, there's not a co-champion. Yeah. But if there's three, then you have to. Yeah, because one beat the other. So yeah. I and I I don't know. I mean, I could see both ways. Do you want? I think mine's pretty good, and I think yeah. mine's is going to pick Mesa apart personally. Yeah, we'll find but out. But if Mesa that'll, that'll wins, be interesting to keep track. We'll know because I think that game is early in the day. Yeah. So because uh, they're playing up in Golden. Yeah, it's early. It'll be the day game there, so we'll be able to tell exactly what what's going on and what's going to happen there. And then uh, the other thing that comes out of the ball game, Joe, was the biggest thing. It's always the biggest player on the team, the most talked about player on the team is the quarterback. There's going to be a quarterback change this week. Yeah, Rex Dowson is now the starter at quarterback in. Uh, he spins it. He throws it well, and he was he was in command of the offense yesterday at practice and today at practice, and and he ran all the one snaps with all the ones. And uh, you know, John will talk a little bit about Bernard McDonald. I'm guessing he's not going to go this week because they have a they have a rule that if you don't practice on Wednesday, by Wednesday you're right. going to be out for the week. I mean, there's some circum special circumstances, but we can ask him because there he is, John Riston, your head coach. He's in. He's here. We're going to let him get situated. This is a natural time to take a time. Relax, John. Relax. He smelled the meatball. He, yeah, he wanted to come in for the meatball. So we're going to take our first break. We come back. We'll welcome John to the show officially on the air. But we'll come back. We are at Andy Max. we got all of our appetizers. we got cold beer. we got a $5 buffet. Come on and join us here at Andy Max for the John Riston Show here on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Catching me mid bite, <laughs> catching you mid <laughs> chicken boneless chicken wing, mid head bang. Yeah, that was that, you know Nate. Nate's leaving us, so you know that. I, I, I heard. I heard he's gonna go up north, Fort Collins area, but so he's going out with a bang. He's training Caitlin tonight. Caitlin's on the board. Gonna be one of our new board ops. So uh, they're I'm, doing that. I'm guessing that's Caitlin Norton, who works down at the station. And okay. Could be. I'm still chewing up this chicken. Do you want to carry me for a little bit? Absolutely. This, this is the John Riston this is Show. It. This is the John Riston Show, and John is in the house. John, how was practice today? Yeah, uh, it, it was uh, very physical, hmm. and uh, we went exactly two hours, and I challenged them about uh, trying to cover our situations. Today's a uh, goal line, short yardage, red zone for offense. And defense to play the normal down the distance and then some third and long. And we had a very spirited go. And uh, our guys are excited to go play Saturday night. What is the mentality of this team now? I know it's young, but what is the – these guys are we, – we're all talking about 0-2 oh and, and how it's – we've never been in this situation since, since 2008. And, I mean, 1983 was the last time. But how is the team? I mean, where are they at? Well, I, I think right now we're in the process of trying to find our identity and uh, trying to grow with that. And I think that uh, our, we're, we're upbeat. We're, uh, you know, part of the theme this week was uh, play better, coach better, and let's go have some fun. And I, I'm worried that our kids right now feel the weight of the world on them. And uh, obviously this is not the standard of uh, pack football. And I think these kids feel a little bit, and um, I'm trying to make sure that these kids have an outstanding time as they go through college, win or lose. And uh, they should enjoy every experience, every experience they they can have. But you know, part of that is, uh, you know, who are you listening to? And part of that is if you listen to your teammates, 
and your coaches and all those people will be fine. But if you listen to all the out, outside forces, uh, that's a product of going 0-2 and, and not focus on the, the goal at hand. You focus on the obstacles, and when you do that, uh, you, you get out of sync a little bit. So I think this group right now, um, we had a, really a good go on Monday, a good go yesterday, and I, I think everybody's into it. We, we want to go play as soon as we can. And we, we want to go and, and have a chance to compete at a high level. And we get a chance to play the Hard Rockers, South Dakota Mines, which we never played before. All right. Well, speaking of listening to who you're listening to, maybe you were listening to Joe and me on your way over, pontificating about what's gone on so far. Well, I, I was sprinting over here, and uh, okay. I did happen to have it on 1350. Right. Okay, well, that's good. Well, I told Joe. I think Joe agrees. And he says, talking to you, you thought you agree. I thought the team played a lot better yeah. Saturday night. I mean, it's another tough opponent. Play here or there could have changed things immensely in that ball game early on and even later on. I mean, there was a play. If you could just, if we could make a play, it could have been a lot different outcome in that ball game. But the effort was there throughout, I thought. No question, Jim. I thought uh, we, we definitely improved from our first week because our first week was so poor that you, you had no <laughs> – if we didn't improve from that, we were really in trouble. And uh, I thought that we, we definitely – did improve. I thought we respected the game. I thought we respected playing, putting on our uniform, and I, I was I was really proud of the way we, we responded in that aspect. Because I challenged them. Because I didn't think we respected the game at Colorado School of Mines, and so um, I thought we came out and played. And and it was kind of funny. You look at the stats, and when you look at stats, it's usually when you lose. Yeah. And I'm just telling you that because you, you find a way why you justify where you came up short. But when we hold the ball for 19 minutes in the first half, and they only have for 10, you say, "Hey, you got a great opportunity." We had over, you know, we had over. Uh, thunder agrees. Hell, I hear you, Thunder. I, I need you, girl. <laughs> and so we we had uh, uh, 10 10 yard runs or more. All right. We had some big plays that never really resulted in putting the ball on the stress zone for them in the red red zone. Mean. And so, you know, we, we were close. And if we can continue to do that, we'll, we'll be all right. It's just going to be, you know, the trust, faith, and patience in this program. And, um, you know, it's, it's kind of ironic that you, you realize, I heard you guys talking, we've never been 0-2. And uh, we started this program, you realize, that, you know, that's kind of ironic about the standard that we set here. And that's the way it's supposed to be. It does give us an out, but it gives us a chance to handle this adversity and grow. Yeah, it could be turn around. If you do turn around and get on a roll, it could be one of those magical turnarounds. Well, you have to be seen about that. I, first things first, I guess, is get that first win in the column. Well, you uh, can't go 9-0 and if you don't go 1-0. and That's right. Well, let's talk about some of the plays during the game that we talked about, those turning point plays. First of all, the touchdown they scored on the pass play. Was he inbounds or not? It was close. It could have gone either way to tell you. Okay, I thought his feet were out of bounds and he fell out of bounds. Well, he, he, he definitely fell out of bounds and his feet were up in the air. And so they said that the goal line is extended from the pylon all the way out to out of bounds. But I said he's never had control and bounce. Yeah. And so, you know, it was a okay. bang bang play. Yeah, I'm saying if that had went to review, it would have been incomplete. But uh, that's the way it goes. Because I, I called it incomplete on the air, and then they said, they're going to call it a touchdown. I couldn't believe it. Because I thought the guy was airborne and fell out. Before. Well, I, I think the other flip side of that is, I don't know if that was a fumble on their first first drive either. I thought the ground might have caused that. If it right. Went, yeah, they, they, it went to replay. And, and yeah. so, you know. Might the other, even out. Right. So. Oh, well, I, I don't know if fumble recover or touchdown. I think i take a touchdown. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now, the other couple of plays, I mean, you, you can look back. Uh, we always talk about a handful of plays during the game. I guess the first half interception when you're driving it, that's a kind of a deal breaker. Can't have that. Uh, then uh, when freshman tied in Morgan Smith, that had to be right in front of you. Probably wondering, what are you doing? <laughs> What? Straight. I, I was trying to give <laughs> he it a like, And he kind of had to lean. He kinda just, he's so big, I think he forgot how big his feet are. Well, I, I for whatever reason, I'm giving the, the sh let's go, crank it yeah, up. Yeah. I'm in the third baseman trying to get him to go home. And, and I, I, it happened right in front of me, and I go, Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Did you go, see wow. the sideline? He had the block and everything. He was going to score, I think. This, and let's yeah. take a quick aside on this. What a great kid. Is a oh, man. What, I oh. mean, look at the build on this guy. Yeah, he's amazing. He, he he's, uh, adds to the our uh, pride and tradition of great tight ends here. Oh, my. So he's 
he's definitely going to add to that. Yeah, I mean, if there's if there's a guy that you can look for for just the next four, go, wow, hey, that's just, one just just build alone. You right. just hope he Great doesn't hands. need himself to tackle. Well, <laughs> or defensive end. <laughs> exactly. Let's talk about another play. Michi's run. I mean, the kid played great, I thought, in you know, in his efforts in the game. So did uh, Dort. They both ran the ball well. But Michi, I mean, that looked like it was going to be a touchdown, too. And he just got excited there and kind of the we, old turf monster. We had two of them, one on our sidelines and one on the other sideline in the third quarter. And, uh, you know, we, we've been accustomed to seeing um, those runs go pretty far. And not every one of those went to touchdowns, but this time we stumbled. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll get better. Yeah. And we, we're blocking better. And we're tackling better. You know, we, we still had 20-some missed tackles out there in the yeah. open. And the, part of that is those, those plays that lead to the plays that make a difference a little bit. And so if you go back through it, you know, we had many many opportunities and we either missed a tackle or missed our opportunity to uh, advance a drive or stop a drive and when that happens you you're you face you're like you're, you you got a pencil stuck in your eye you just can't get it out and then you're pressing more and more right. to try to make that play and you're trying to be superman instead of clark kent and i'm just trying to talk to our guys just be clark kent just do your job have fun doing it and do it to the best of your ability. Well, and we're closer. You know, we, we talked a little bit about the uh, on the air is the offensive line handled a pretty good front from yeah. West Texas. They're, one of their strengths perennially. Well, Joe, is remember when we saw the four of them coming across we're like, oh, in a line. It was like, man, I've been the game. And they're as big and as athletic as they've ever line. been. But I thought, <laughs> you mentioned it, that they blocked a lot better. Yeah. I thought that uh, we, we, were, we got targeted right. We were physical. I thought our... Uh, uh, you know, well, it's more like pack football. Yeah. And, you know, we, we had uh, uh, a turnover uh, on that first drive, like you said. We had three interceptions. One went for a touchdown for them. And we missed three field goals. And we missed those opportunities. And those field goals were long. It was yeah, tough. And it was windy. And, and, and it, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't on, on him. It was just, you know, we had an opportunity. If we convert those, we don't give up that interception for a touchdown. And we just punt the ball and make them drive, you never know what's going to happen. Then I guess the last play to talk about, which even at that point, if you get it, the block punt that should have been a scoop and score, and you're you know you're already thinking ahead two-point conversion, it's a one-score game with a two-point conversion. I mean, that's the kind of game it could have been, but then it kind of went for not there. Well, it should have been. Yeah. And, uh, and Again, I think it's one of those times you just get excited and you just... Well, the, it's just we, we work on that, scoop and score, and... Obviously, we're trying to do too much. Is that Josh to, Johnson? Yes, yeah. it's Josh. And, I mean, he's so long. Yeah. That, and it looked with those big hands. You can see he wears those white gloves. These giant hands go down and get it. And I thought, he's going to take that to the house. Well, we, we had an opportunity. We, it was a nice design by Sammy Sewell on the yeah. punt block. And James Maxey came through and took it right off his foot. Another young guy you and, like. And uh, he's done a nice job. And, and the ball came out. And. Josh had a chance to, to get it. And the other thing is, you know, it, it's it's funny. You get magnified when you're in these positions about your mistakes. And so the first punt that we had, it was the same rush that we had when we blocked, the, when we got the punt blocked. Kalen came close. And you know, I'm talking oh, about our, our punt. punt that got blocked. Okay. Yeah, that led to uh, one of the, the second field goal they had. Yeah. And uh, that... That could have been handled very easy because we did it the first time, but we didn't do it the second time. So that involves coaching. To me, that's involved the standard of coaching that um, we got to improve, and the standard that we have there is, is not acceptable right now. All right, we've got a lot of questions lined up in our third segment. We always go to the uh, text messages. If you got one for John, 719-671-7574. We'll try to squeeze you in. We've got about five or six of them lined up here, I see. So. I have a couple, too. Yeah, there you go. 719-671-7574. We are at Andy Max. It is the John Ristich Show. Come on down and join us. $5 buffet, drink specials. We'll be here till 7, and then for a little bit longer, you can chat with us in as well. This is the John Ristich Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Man, oh man, John Riston Show here at Andy Max. Are you talking about me sprinting in here? Yeah, you were coming in a little hot. You were coming in a little hot. But uh, it's time for our. 
fan segment where they send the uh, texts in. First, you follow baseball, John? A little bit? Uh, just, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, he does not. Yeah. Okay. The World Series. No, he says the Angels suck. He says that. I was just remembering a few years back, remember when we, uh, we, were, when we used to right. do the show at that other, the chain wing place there when the Red Sox blew it against the... Man, we don't want that happening again. No. Is. But the Orioles are up one to nothing in the fifth. They did break up the no-hitter, so Red Sox do have the tying run on board. So we're keeping an eye on that. we got plenty of screens around here. What do we got on here tonight? We have the police. I think the Red Sox game is on a TV over here in the corner, so that's cool. I'll be, I'll be watching that after the show's over. Just check out that. But uh, come on in down and join us. We've got the uh, $5 buffet. Can't beat it. You can have some of this other stuff. It's kind of like a... Uh, Quesadillas, wings, yeah, man, it's good meatballs. The, All right. The, the wings, naked wings dipped in the Asian zing. Asian zing is my thing. It's pretty good. Who is it? It's you. a rhymer. Get right. them there, my Angelou. Let's get uh, right out of the... Uh, well, this isn't a question. You know, Mr. Ken, yep. frantic, he just says, let's get this thing going. Best of luck this weekend. So I appreciate it, Ken. We're, we're so we're going we're gonna to ease you in. Okay. <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm ready to go. I deserve these questions. Now the questions get tough. Let's go. Because Abigail and Madison are going to weigh in now. I love you know, Abigail and Madison. These questions are always, you know, where you want them to be, and they're really important. And they want to know this week, hey, do you like day games or night games better? Which is better, and what should we be playing? Well, I think this time of year I'll, I'll take a night game because I think our fan base is, uh, really enjoys that. And I, I hope they have a great time up in uh, being a fan at, uh, versus trying to battle the heat and being able to handle that. As soon as the season gets going, I do like playing the, the, the day games because you get it over with and uh, you have the rest of the day. And uh, you're not sitting around saying what if and your stomach's growling and you got butterflies and you're nervous and uh so i answered it both ways what do they like uh, what do they like well we'll see if they chime in uh, what do they like we'll need you to chime into what you like better now the next question is kind of a three-parter okay and it deals with something that happened in this very special ceremony saturday yeah. at halftime the uh liamiti warrior center uh how was it decided that the center be dedicated to him that's the first question well i think uh what uh Leo was speaking at a um, FCA conference or a, a, that we had up here at the university, and was telling us, uh, telling him uh, the crowd his story. And Danny and I had a meeting the, the next day, and um, uh, Danny DeRose kind of brought it up, and I said, "That's a hell of an idea," and the way it went. Okay, and what do you think the long-term impact of this new facility is going to be on Pack football? Well, I, I think it's it's a tremendous impact on 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 us. I think our training facility we outgrew it. Now we're going to have all the things we need need to be able to have right there in, in our complex, and so we won't be stepping on it, everybody's toes. But the most important thing is the impressive thing to our recruits that we have coming in, and um, what. It, it, that's what's going to sell, but it's what you do inside of those things is what's going to mark your program. As long as you can target and have the facilities to do it, I think our new training room is first class, and that's one of the reasons why we needed to do that to add some more lockers so we could have everybody dressed in that building. And then with the new weight room, you know we're adding a few few more equipments and few things that will help us develop our, our uh, athletes, but it's a facility where all our athletes, not just football, but all our athletes at CSU Pueblo are going to be able to train and get better. So I think it's going to be a tremendous impact, and I think we won't see that for a couple years. Then the greed factor kicks in, okay, this is great. Another listener wants to know, when are we going to put in a big indoor bubble to, put that, to have indoor <laughs> track meets and have the football team practice inside when they need to? Well, uh, When is that coming? I, I don't see that in the, in, in the future. I don't have a crystal ball or uh, hold the envelope to my forehead to say when that's coming. But, uh, Come on, Karnak. No, I, Kar, Karnak's not me right now. Okay. Well, <laughs> Karnak's trying to go 1-0 and this week. Now we've, we yes. do have an update here on Madison and Abigail. Oh. They like night games better because they get to stay up late and eat junk food all night. Well, I, that's, a good, that's a good thing. Then I like night games because of that reason for them. All right, uh, let's see. Well, well this one seems to be involved here. <laughs> I, I got uh, one. I got one. Charles there. from Texas. This is Uncle Charles, Uncle Charlie, okay. Tundra. Uncle Charlie 
Uh, a little concerned about the slow start. Can we expect the pack to begin rolling this week against South Dakota Mines, against the Hard Rockers? Well, our, our plan is to go in and play 60 minutes of pack football and give it everything we got, and hopefully it's good enough to get on the scoreboard. And uh, we're making a change at quarterback. Uh, Rex Dawson is uh, going to start at quarterback, and uh, A.J., uh, has done a nice job, but we just feel like we need to make a change there to maybe help us grow. All right, that leads right into our last question. It, it kind of dovetails in with that. Will we see the same rotation of quarterbacks, or is it going to be more or less Rex playing, or are we going to see? Right right now we're going with Rex, and uh, we're going to let Rex go win this ball game. Okay. Then you got a couple there, Well, Joe? one I just uh, – I, these are from the Pueblo Athletic Club. All the guys at the gym wanted to know. Because I get that in the mornings. Do they <laughs> want to yoga? Yeah, no. This is their oh. today was lifting, so they okay. want to know. Or they want to sauna, <laughs> steam yeah, room, a steam. Hey, what about those? <laughs> they want to know. Everybody's doing the run pass option now, and that was supposed to be the big thing with AJ because he was supposed to be able to give you that run pass option, but we never saw him run. And Rex also is is very capable of running. Is 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 the playbook been shortened? Or have you just not shown things that you, you'd like to show? Well, I, I think we, we have those down the road, and we, we didn't feel like we were ready to play those in our game. And uh, I think it's a combination, too, of our, our new coaching staff a little bit. And how to mix all that together has been quite the challenge. You know, this is our third year that we've had a, a different quarterback coach in a passing game. And um, that, that's that been quite the challenge. And I think that little mixture and that combination of uh, being able to get young offensive linemen, young quarterbacks, young wide receivers to understand what that looks like has, has tabled that part of our offense. All right, that's been tabled. <laughs> there we go, tabled. Well, there you motion go. We're motion to table the run pass option. So we went through those questions pretty quick. If you have one, you want to squeeze one in here. Seven Come on, let's go ahead seven one seven five seven four. Joe's got one. Well, more. the other one was the health of Bernard McDonald. Uh, I saw him. Did not go today. Did not go yesterday. I I really would think that Bernard's out for this game, and uh, he has a little strain uh, um, MCL and a uh, little hamstring and so he's ha he's doing everything he can rehab wise uh he's just painful to cut but it's uh uh so i i don't think he's going to be able to play this week and then and then just to lead in and then what does that do for your your depth chart in running backs because obviously michi is a is a good guy fraylet is a program guy but then after that, is it David Cardinal? Is I, I saw some redshirt, or not some redshirt, some true freshmen right. getting carries. Where are you at with that? Well, right right now, I, we, we're going to go with Fredlett and um, um, Michi. And uh, then we have a young man, J.C. Cherry, that's very talented. Very, very talented. He's a freshman from Cherry Creek. Right. right? Yeah. And, and he, he got hurt the first part of camp. He hurt his shoulder, so he's only been back to practice really uh, uh, the last two weeks. And um, I, I think that it, and he and David Cardinal will be able to play, but I think uh, if, if, if things go the way we're supposed to, that uh, we, we try to, to like to redshirt J.C. Let's talk a little bit about Michi. I mean, this kid, I mean, you don't realize how big he is until you get down there field level and get next to you up in the stands he's kind of a shortish guy but this guy is pretty thick and he, he's got that great combination not thick and slow and soft he's he's like a rock and runs fast he, he's uh Who's really he remind you of he's yoked he, he reminds me a little bit of um say an opponent from the past who would you compare him to um maybe those good young backs at uh uh, uh, Chad, Chatterin and Carney that right, okay. had the combination of power, power and speed. Two years ago, uh, Chatterin had that back that Clinton. Clinton. Yeah. Okay. And uh, thank you, I forgot and his Clinton. name. And and uh, that's who he reminds me of. And he can be uh, kind of special. And he, he ran it. He runs it up in there. Hard place. He's got that speed. But and Fredlet, he showed. You know, he's a guy that not imposing. You think just looking at him physically, but he can scoot through that hole pretty good too. And he's kind of fearless. 
Got that edge from playing special teams. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's just the greatest kid. He, I bet he said five words in five years since he's been yeah, here. He's he doesn't say much. He's just happy to be a part of it. He goes to work. He does his job. Uh, he, he's a tremendous teammate that we could all count on. He's got great character. And he works his tail end off, and that's why he's been able to. You know, he came in here as a walk-on. Because from Florida. Yeah, Not Frannix like it's, here. he came from Colorado Springs. And his, his brother was here. Is Frannix still around? Uh, Frannix is coaching. Um, he's coaching here somewhere. Uh, I know he's teaching up in Colorado Springs. Okay, good. All right, there we go. That's our question segment. For the head coach, John Reston, we thank everybody for sending your questions each and every week. Come back after this timeout. We'll talk about the Hard Rockers this week's game as we, in search of win number one, and Tundra's ready, we're ready. Come on down to Andy Max. Join us after the show right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Reston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Listen for a while. You know, <laughs> that's kind of the way I feel. So I we feel. Are, uh, feel. That's when you're in your parents' basement. <laughs> yeah. And you're wearing all black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Reagan, let's bring back the old days on Baylor. Yes. Yes. We're all Sunset Park kids. That's right. Fordham, Baylor. I was a Temple. We're right I was there. In, I was in. I was in the belly of the beast last night. Sunset Park. I had had, and my sister Susie's in town. We had delicious peach pie. I had a Facebook Live video. John, I know you don't do much Facebook and, you know, during season, but uh, if you go there, check it out, you see this peach pie that, that Ida made. Oh, God, it was unbelievable. And my sister Susie putting ice cream on her scoop of vanilla, and I go, that's all right, one ice cr- scoop's enough, and she kept digging. She goes, I guess I look like two scoops, don't I? <laughs> Another scoop came on there, but that's the way that goes. But uh, Is, is they do a great job of like we talked about before in these R- RPOs. That's how they're built, and the RPOs are run pass options. And their quarterback, I think, is really an outstanding player. They got a couple uh, big receivers on the outside that are, are talented. Um, they are up tempo. They have a little back that will scoot. Uh, I mean, it, you miss a tackle like they did at, at, at Dixie, and he goes 75 yards. And uh, But the guy that I think is really impressive is our quarterback. I know he's a coach's son. and um, Jake he, Sullivan is his and name. He's done a nice job of running their offense, and he, he's a very accurate thrower. So what kind of offense? Like you said, just the read option, more or less? It's, it's uh, around, read option, spread bubble, around. spread it around. Uh, very similar to what Black Hills okay. tries, tries to do to you. And um, it, it, they, they put you in some conflict. And you got to be aligned right. And you got to be able to tackle right. Our, our issue is that we got to go tackle. And, you know, we tackle and we run to the ball. That's what I want us to do. It's another one of these programs that's coming in. We talk about the potential of Black Hills State sitting up there, kind of getting their pick of a few different kind of athletes coming in there. South Dakota Mines has that ability with their academics, I guess. You know, it's a smart guy school, kind of like Mines. I, we're looking at their so they bring guys in from all over the country. So it means their talent pool is the country, I guess, or the western half of the United States in particular. Got a couple guys from Hawaii on the ball club. So that they, they, can, they have a potential to, to do some damage down the road, don't you think? Oh, yeah. I, we, we run into them in recruiting down in Arizona. They've done a nice job recruit a lot of Arizona kids and they've gotten into Colorado a little bit and they're starting defense and who's out of Aurora Central uh, High School is I believe 94 uh, he, he's a guy that has, has done a nice job uh, motor guy their defense is really you're gonna see they're gonna play a, a 4-3 and they they're gonna man you up on the outside they got two really outstanding corners and they man everybody up, and their ends are going to point inside and just go as hard as they can and get a lot of disruption. They're going to line up the Mike linebacker, middle linebacker, up about seven yards, and he's just going to play football, you know, and, and, and let everybody funnel all that stuff into him. And then he's got help behind him with the safeties coming down, and the safeties are going to run 
run pass kind of read with that whole thing and and so they they play downhill um, they're quick and uh, I've been really impressed with watching them on William Jewell and what they did against uh, Dixie State. They said uh, talking to Coach Tinker, he said that their middle linebacker you mentioned was a defensive end that they recruited as a linebacker and they said we need help and would, would you go to defensive end so they so first couple of years he played defensive end they asked him in the spring would you go back to linebacker and i guess he lit up like a christmas can yes. I please please can i go back to linebacker <laughs> yeah I, I think he's done a nice job of running to the ball and and the way they they got it structured they funneled it all to him so he's getting a lot of action for that well i'm sure stressing to your ball club hey we need to get a win don't just don't read the clippings or hear us talk. It's a new program coming in here. We might have a easier game since the first two games were so hard. When you haven't won a ball game, I'm sure you have the complete attention of the room and won't let them up. Well, one minute. I'm just telling you that uh, we're they're two and zero and we're zero and two. And if that ain't attention enough to realize that uh, this is our second RMAC game, and all our goals are still in front of us. And this is we got to go one and zero. And our part of our theme is, like I said, we got to play better, we got to coach better, and we, we got to go have fun. And that's that's what I, I think we're we're missing is that ingredient of going having fun. And and I'm trying to put a picture on it because we need to work, and you got to work. And the only way we spell fun around here is W I N. And so I think everybody's feeling a little little stress, obviously. And, I'm trying to manage that through them to say, let's just relax. Let's go play our game. Let's do the things that we need to. The keys to victory is making sure that we, we play physical, win a line of scrimmage, win the turnover battle, which we haven't done. Right. We're minus seven in two games. You go through our whole history of starting this thing, I don't think we've ever been minus seven. So that tells you a lot why we've been able to lose. We haven't got turnovers, and we've been turning the ball over. And a lot of that was, you know, we had three interceptions last week. We didn't fumble. We had all that five fumbles versus mines. And all that stuff has come into play, and that's why you lose ball games. And so those are the little details, I think, that guys are trying to do so much. Instead of just go play the game. Play the game the way it's supposed to be played. Do what your coach. Listen, and let's go have some fun. Well, I guess the message to the fans, too, is each and every game now the rest of the year is an individual battle you can't worry about the whole body of work we got to go out and have fun and have a good atmosphere fans need to get into it and let's just go out and win a football game and treat it like it's a playoff game this week yeah we, we need everybody's support because it is a uh, uh it's early in september but it, it's a it's a must need win for our program and uh, we we got to go one and all, and the key to going one and all was, like I said, all the years we've been doing it, just put your head down and go to work for 60 minutes and hope it's good enough. If it's not good enough, then so be it. But you're giving it your very best, and I, I think we're getting closer to that. I thought last week we got closer. The week before, I was embarrassed about the way we even respected this game of football, the way we respected the way we went out and played, but we made improvements on that. And so we got to keep building on that. And I think the fans need to know that, I mean, this new facility, the Liamini Warrior Center, is also a great place. Well, I should say tune up. No, get ready for a ball game. When you get up there on top of that deck, it's it's a nice atmosphere. And even after the game starts, you don't have to feel rushed. You're not missing anything like you did before out in the parking lot. Now you can kind of, if you're, you know, take your time, I guess, but you can also observe the game from up there and then move your stands. It's a, a lot better experience, I think, for the fans right now. Right. I think that uh, uh, it seemed to add to our atmosphere. And when, when you watch our practice tape and your game tape and you see that beautiful building and the sands uh, fans sitting on top of that I mean it just adds to a big time atmosphere but we need the fans to be there and I thought uh, last week the fans were great 
Um, you know, we, we need to try to get a, a five-yard penalty on uh, uh, South Dakota Mines, yeah, the Hard Rockers, the with the defense. When our defense on the field, the fans need to be energetic, They're stomping on the this stadium and being yelling and screaming, and 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 we need some excitement. We we feed off the excitement from the crowd. Well, everybody's in tune with that money down thing. I noticed that yeah. fans are all ready for that. The players are ready for that. We're ready for that. Well, John. Best of luck this weekend. Thanks for coming on out, everybody, here in tennis at Andy Max. We thank everybody from Andy Max, everything they do for us. Still got time to come on down here. We got the $5 buffet. It's uh, It goes for a little while longer. So as long as uh, there's food out there, you can come out and give the 5 bucks for that. Come out and join us for the show. Now, a program reminder for us. We'll be on the air at 5.30 right here on Fox Sports Pueblo on Saturday night from the Thunder Bowl. The uh, kickoff will be at... 6 o'clock. Be sure to join us there. Our producer and engineer tonight has been Nate Baptist. Nick Donovan is the operations manager for Joe Servi. For the head coach, John Riston, I'm Jim Brooks. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Tune in again next week at the same time for all things CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football. Only on Fox Sports 1350. ACCY Pueblo.